And let's talk about uh, text to outline. And what is that? Well, it's basically going from the left to the right. Of course, you're, when you do text to outline, you're not going to go to um, a text element that is not filled. You want to preserve the visual representation. But essentially what you're doing is you're replacing a text element by a vector element that has the same shape. Yes, something that is very, very common. And again, in some workflows, um, I see that all documents in the workflow, uh, without discrimination, go through the uh, text to outline process. There are some problems with that. And again, it is usually not, not well known what the problem is. The biggest problem is uh, that you think that you get something that is visually equal, while actually you don't. Yeah? And the, the differences, the visual differences, are going to get bigger when the text that you convert gets smaller. So if you do this on a, on a banner where you have text that is 10 centimeter high or 20 centimeter high, then there is a good chance you're not going to see much difference before and after. But if you do this on small text, then you are going to see differences for a number of reasons. And the first one is hinting. If you look at a, at a, a font today, fonts are in reality very complex applications of themselves. We don't think of, of, of fonts like an application, but they really are. They contain all kinds of instructions and they can be really complex. And one of the things they can contain is hinting. If you look at the text on the left and the text on the right, the difference is uh, that the text on the left is going to make you crazy if you try to read it. The text on the right isn't. That doesn't mean that it is that much better in terms of resolution. If you look closely, you can see that the pixelation, for example, is exactly the same, left and right. What is different is that the character positions and character widths and so on are much better on the right than on the left. And this is because of hinting. A font in this case is used that, uh, on the right hand side, is used that has special provisions for when it's rendered at small at small sizes. And those provisions say, for example, if there is a letter M, you should make sure that the three legs of the M have the same width. Why is that? Because our brain is very, very good at seeing things that are wrong with a pattern. So if one of the little legs of this character M is bigger than the others, then we will see that immediately. The same with where you can see that letters are a little bit closer than in other locations. Those are things that drive our, our brain crazy. And hinting is designed to, to fix that. Now, if you convert the text to outlines, now all, all of a sudden you have vector elements. There is no font anymore, so there is no hinting anymore. And that is one of the reasons that you see differences between what happens on the left and what happens on the right. This is another example of that, very much the same. The text on the right looks much better and is going to be much more legible than the text on the left. And the reason is exactly the same, no hinting on the left-hand side, hinting on the right-hand side. There is a more fundamental problem in PDF, and it's a little bit theoretical, but it's worthwhile knowing. Now, what you're looking at here is a representation of a pixel grid. So think of every one of those little uh, things that you see there, and like the little table, and you have little cells in there. Each of these cells is a pixel. Think of it that way. And we are drawing a shape that is very nice pink. And so, the line that you see there is the edge of the shape. And now the question becomes, what happens when that line crosses over a pixel? Is that pixel going to be colored or not? And annoyingly, PDF has two different ways of doing that. Text is filled using something that is called thin fill. And thin fill is what you see on the left, and it means that a pixel is colored only if it is covered for more than 50%. So if this line that you see here cuts a pixel, but it does not go over more than 50% of that pixel, 
then the pixel is not colored. And you can see that very clearly in the three not colored, um, not colored cells that you have in this, uh, in this image. Yeah? On the right-hand side, you have fat fill, and that is also used in uh, PDF. And fat fill says, well, I don't care. As soon as you hit the pixel, I don't care for how much. As soon as it overlaps, you're going to fill that pixel with the uh, color. Yeah? And you can see that there is a difference between those two slides, even though the line crosses at exactly the same location. Well, in PDF, text is rendered using thin fill, vector elements are rendered using fat fill. What is the result of that? Well, the result is this. If I take a file, like the one I have on the left, that uses text, and I convert that text to outlines, I get what you see on the right. Yeah. If you look at the sentence there, there are old cars and then and so on. If you look at that sentence, you will see that on the left hand side, it looks thinner than it is on the right hand side. And the difference is thin fill on the left because that's real text and fat fill on the right because that's vector. If you compare these two documents, you get the view that you see at the bottom there. And you see that all the differences are around the edges of the characters. So again, if you do this uh, for a banner, for example, where you have text that is 10 centimeter or 20 centimeter high, it's not going to be the end of the world. But if you have text where you have regular 12 point, 15 point, 16 point text in it, in a document, well, you are going to see a visual difference between the original file and the converted file. Yeah? So should that stop you? And should it mean that you never convert text to outlines? No, there, there can be cases that it is helpful or necessary. Um, usually the reason is that there is a problem with the font in there and it doesn't rip or whatever. Fine, in that case, you can do it. But be aware that by doing this, you are modifying how this file looks and is going to print afterwards. Yeah? And so if you use this approach, do it only when necessary. And make sure that you realize that for documents that contain small text, the difference is going to be much bigger visually than documents that where all the text has a certain size. Yeah? And you could even uh, try to come up with a strategy where you only where you only do this for text that is over a certain point size if you want to minimize the risks. But that is the, the risk that you have with that strategy. So please don't just convert text to outlines for everything. Make sure that it's really necessary before you do that and that you realize the, uh, the consequence. Uh, David, there's something that you, you pointed out that is very important and uh, not that known uh, for what I've experienced in the field, that um, a font is actually not a regular file, but it's a piece of software. And that's where all the intelligence of the font is, as you just explained. And that's also one of the reasons why you're not allowed to take a font and give that to somebody else because it's, it is covered by software license. So that's exactly. why it's uh, piracy when you take yes. a font and send that to somebody else. And it's why fonts are expensive because someone spent a hell of a lot of time uh, making sure it's going to look nice at different resolutions and in different circumstances, absolutely. 